Welcome to our adventures. We're Jess and John, and we quit our jobs five months ago to live our dreams and travel. So far, we've had an amazing Australian adventure, building a van and exploring 10,000 kilometres of my incredible home state. We then set off on a mind-blowing road trip around Malaysia, and we're astonished by all that it had to offer. In this episode, we share our plans for what's next and try to decide what vehicle is best for the job. Welcome back, everyone. And as you can see, we're back in the not-so-sunny UK. But you join us as we've decided what direction we want to go on our next adventure and what vehicle is best to get us there. We absolutely love van life, but the trouble is you always want something different. From the experiences we've had and the experiences we've had FOMO from, if you've got a super mega hardcore four wheel drive, we're jealous of you. We've learned that you want an overlander that can get you everywhere. What kind of vehicle is this road say it's for, John? Four wheel drives only. And what have we got? Two wheel drive only. But the trouble is, you also want a big van that gives you space and comfy living. You want to be able to park and access little country villages and lanes, but then you want to be able to move everything outside in a hot country and live in the sun. But then in cold countries, you want to have loads of space inside so you can keep warm and not feel cramped. So what vehicle do you go for? So John's always told me you need the right tool for the right job. So before we tell you about our plans, let's check out these beauty tools. This is the go-to vehicle for van life. It's popular for a reason, the medium wheelbase sprinter. The king of overlanding and off-road, the Land Rover Defender. And the ugly duckling, the ex-supermarket delivery van. And it's Sainsbury's if you want to know. This is our little beauty, the old medium wheelbase sprinter. She's another COVID baby. But the reason we went for the Sprinter is because you can get bits from all around the world. And I'm a bit biased. I think the Sprinters are the best van going. So the medium wheelbase is brilliant because it's under six meters. So you can fit in most car parking spaces and everywhere you go, it's easy to get about. And the panel van, it's just easy to convert. All the walls are there. You just got to line them. There's plenty of space inside. And yeah, basically it's just the best all rounder. So this old girl has done us proud and I absolutely love her. She's so spacious. We never feel cramped in her really. And I think one of the reasons for that is that it's got 360 degree windows. It used to be an old ambulance. And you wake up on your wild camping spot, you look out the window and you're part of where you are. It's just absolutely magical. Another great thing about the Sprinter is because they're so big, you can do so many different layout options in them. And you can even make them so that you can have families in them or if you've got dogs, just brilliant with the, the flexibility of the space inside. One thing that's not so great about it though is she's not a four wheel drive. So we can't get everywhere that we want. And another downfall, even though I love the windows, is that they're not very warm. So even with our thermal curtains, we freeze our butt off in winter. The Sprinter might not be able to get you everywhere, but there's not many places this old girl can't go. And just look at her. She is a beauty. Now, the reason everybody converts these ones, because these are the 110s and you can get a pop top roof for them so you can get a little bit of space in the back. But like I say, there's nowhere where you can't go in these. And they're like Lego. Like you can pretty much unbolt all the panels and change everything on it. Um, it's good on fuel. Whereas if you wanted a bit more space, I suppose you could go for an overlanding truck, but the miles per gallon on that is horrendous. And you're not really getting down any country lanes or going over some cobbled streets and that without anyone recognizing it. Whereas this, you're a lot more likely to go stealth. So she might be pretty and she might be tough, but she's not very big. <laughs> um, we can, you can get an alu cab conversion, which takes this roof and turns it into a pop top. So you can actually stand up in the back of them, which makes the world of difference. Um, and you can get quite good storage along the back and still be able to have a stealth bed in here. So you can do more with them than it perhaps looks, um, but they're sure as heck not gonna be a big space. And I think that it would get pretty cramped in a cold climate where you spend a lot more time inside. However, in a warmer climate, where you're gonna spend a lot of time outside, what better than to take your house onto the beach? And last in the lineup is the supermarket box van. And look at her, isn't she ugly? But she might be ugly, but she's got a usage because this is a GRP box and this is the most thermally efficient box you're ever gonna get for a camper. So two of our favorite YouTubers, King In It and Overland is Sophia. And we've watched some of their travels where they've struggled in cold climates with tanks freezing, pipes bursting and everything like that. Whereas if you put everything inside in here with a little heater in, there's nothing that's gonna freeze. So brilliant. The other good thing about it is it's a Mercedes Sprinter. So the chassis is brilliant and if you wanted to get this vehicle in a panel van 
the same mileage and everything like that, you're paying about £4,000 more than you would this. I think because this is a bit uglier and a little bit harder to convert and things like that, I think that's why you're going to pay a difference. But, um, but yeah, for me, these are just incredible. It's not a four-wheel drive. That's the only downside to it. But again, with costs, if you wanted a four-wheel drive in this version, you're paying three times the price. And that's if you can find one, because in England, there's not many Sprinter four-wheel drives about. So it's got its pros and it's got its cons. So she might be ugly, but she's big and she could be comfy. You can get rid of this dividing wall here, which actually gives you the same floor space as you've got in a medium wheelbase sprinter. So it's just the same length, so you've got all the same advantages with being able to park, get places, all that jazz. But the actual space that you get in here is so much better because the sides are square, so your volume or your overall capacity just gives you so much space. You absolutely can't beat the thermal efficiency, especially if you put in some double glazed kind of caravan windows as well, so you can still see out. You're not gonna get that 360 view that you get from our beauty van, but you can get a thermally efficient, big spaced van. Now the slight disadvantage is there's no straight crawl through to a cab, but you can put one in. So you do have that advantage as well. And you could also make this quite stealthy. So she's got a lot going for her. And I think she's a bit of an ugly duckling. I think if you do all the overlandy bits to the outside, I think you can make her quite pretty. So what vehicle's best? We don't know. We haven't got a clue. So we decided the only way to find out is to test all three. And with that in mind, the first thing on the agenda is for our beauty van to get a trip round Europe. We're going to do an epic European summer road trip, starting in France, through Switzerland, Italy, all the way down to Bosnia and Herzegovina. So if you've got any hints, tips, places we can't miss, please hit us up in the comments because we're off next week. And then when we get back, the build begins. I'm so excited for this. It's been on my bucket list for a long time now. We're going to convert this into the ultimate overlanding vehicle to get everywhere, all them places I've always wanted to get to, off the beaten track, it's just gonna be incredible. And then once we convert it, we're gonna test her out in the UK, and then at the end of the year, we're off to Africa. <laughs> so amazing. And once we've tested her in the UK though, all attention turns to this ugly duckling. And I tell you my friends, she might be ugly now, but she's gonna become a beautiful Arctic swan. We're gonna turn her in to the coolest winter vehicle you've ever seen. And we're gonna go and test her out in Northern Europe and the Nordics, might even get up to the Arctic Circle. Um, but before we do go, we're gonna make sure she actually works the way we planned in the UK. And we're gonna to go to Scotland in this autumn. So there you have it. We don't know what vehicle's best, but hopefully we're gonna find out anyway. So we've got a busy year ahead of us because not only have we got to build the van and the overlander, we've got to learn how to use the overlander because the last time we tried to do a bit of beach work, we got bugged. <laughs> it didn't really go too well. So, and if you haven't seen them adventures from Australia, go back and watch them because they were, they were, they were incredible. Yeah, so much fun. And hey, what are life savings for if they're not for incredible adventures? Speaking of which, make sure you come back and see us next week because hopefully you'll find us in Europe.